Hello and welcome to another web development tutorial and today I'm gonna do an update on a video I did some month ago about the custom Google search or programmable search engine. Back in this first video, which I'm gonna link below, I explained how to integrate the programmable search engine from Google into any homepage with just a few lines of code and as a result I also integrated it into my homepage template, which you see here. So this one's free on my GitHub, so you can download it, look at it, use it, customize it, whatever you want. But this template has what you see up here, a custom search in which I can type, for example, London. And then here we have a custom search results page. So this was basically the result of the last tutorial. Now what we're going to have to do is just recently what I noticed also on my homepage was this block of ads popping up in the search results on my homepage and I really don't want to see it. What I first tried to check the settings for the Google custom search. This is also something I explained in the first video but you see here there's this ad section where I can turn off the monetization but this does not seem to affect those ads being shown. It just allows me to monetize them but if I don't want to show them at all I didn't find a setting here that worked. So what we're going to do instead is we just use CSS to hide it. And I'm also going to show you how you can do further customization. For example, those results here, they still show the colors which are typical for the Google search results. But yeah, you can customize them to fit your needs. Let me quickly show you how this looks on my photo homepage. So if you look at the search results here, you see the colors look completely different. They fit to what I have on my homepage. Also, those image results are styled differently. They have different sizes. So you can really go into the depth here and customize it to your liking. And let's just start with that. So looking at this page, at this search results page, what you do in Chrome or whatever browser you use, bring up the developer tools. For Chrome, it's just pressing F12. Then, as I said, I want to hide this ad block here. So what we're going to do is we just use the picker here to inspect the structure here of the HTML. So let's just select the search engine here. So we see now here this GSC control, that's the complete search results. Then I can just go through it, go down here. We have a search box, this is the wrapper and here's the search results wrapper. So really going through the different diffs and then there's another wrapper. And now if we go into this GSC wrapper, you already see there's a block, a diff, GSC ad block. And then here's the results box visible. So if we now select this diff here, what I can do now here, this GSC ad block, you see there's a display block. Instead of block, let's do none. And voila, it's already gone. So that's the first thing. I just now need to do this in the real CSS for my homepage or for my template. So let's head over to that. So within the template, there's this variant base folder and in it, I have a styles folder. If you don't use my template, that's fine. You can just use whatever CSS file you have included in your homepage and put the styles I now create there. I'm also using SCSS and I've structured it a bit. What we have here, there's already a search CSS, which is a file where I put some styling for the Google search results page, but I don't yet have some specific styling for the actual results or the different diffs that Google gives me. What I'm going to do here in this SCSS, um, if you're not familiar with SCSS, it's just a nicer way to write CSS styles. For example, I can do grouping here and by grouping, I basically saying here, I have a diff called search container and then I have children in it. So basically descendants. And by this, I can create more specificity for the CSS styles, which is a point I'm going to talk about in a few minutes because it's important to ensure that your styles also really override the styles from Google. So just at the end here, what I'm going to do is let's just check again the name of the class. So it was GSC ad block, which is, as you can see, under GSC control. So I'm not going to put it into this search container. I have to put it into the content. So there's a main tab in my homepage and as a direct child of it, I have the content. Let me quickly show you. So you here have the main div in it is another div with content. So this way I already make the styling I now do very specific. 
Now in this content what I have, I have this GSC wrapper. So I can go even more specific if I want to, but I think I don't need to do it. I think creating the styles like this is already specific enough to allow the overrides. So I just do dot GSC minus add block here. And then I'll do display none. I save it. Quickly run the compiler. So I'm using gulp here to transpile those SCSS files into real CSS. And now if I refresh here, you see the ad is gone. Let's have a look now. If we click here on this div with the GSC ad block, you see down here the display which comes from Google, the block is overridden by this more specific style, the main content GSC ad block, it overrides it to none. And this is uh, where this specificity or this hierarchy comes in. If you want to make sure that your overrides take precedence over whatever Google does, you just make sure that you make your selectors more specific. And if you're using SCSS, it's very easy because you can just layer your styles a bit. So basically what I've done here, I'm just telling, okay, I have a main div, which has a child content. And in this, I have a descendant div with the style GSC ad block. So it's very specific. And then I set this to none. So I can be quite sure that this override will always win against the Google overrides. Now let's do a second change. What I want to do is change the color of those links here. You see in my homepage or this template, I use some grayish color for the links up here. And I don't want those here to be blue. Now here you will see how Google has more specific selectors. And that's why this color here is blue instead of gray. So I already selected this field here. And what you see is way down here, this is where I set the color for the body. And if we scroll up, you see here, I set the color for the hrefs. It's again a grayish color, but it's also crossed out because up here, those selectors from Google, those take precedence. They are more specific or actually they come after my selectors because the Google scripts are executed at the end of my homepage and they pull in all the CSS styles from Google, which is why the Google styles basically win. If I don't make the selectors for the coloring now, even more specific than that. So as a first test, I'm gonna deactivate the colors here from Google and see if this helps. So let's just deactivate those. And you see here for some of the search results, it actually works. We have now gray results, but up here, this still is blue. So you can now go through this complete hierarchy and try to find the proper selector to use here. But what you can also do, and this is something you normally don't do when you do CSS for your homepage, at least for the styles which you control. But here it starts from Google, which you want to override. And I show you now how you can do this a little simpler than now searching for all the different selectors that could lead to this entry here being blue. What you can do is you can use something which is called important. So what I now have here, this is a selector for the web results and it's already very specific. It tells me, okay, we want to target all the links in the search results and also all the bold links. But here I also added this little summation mark important, which is kind of bad when you write CSS, when you write a homepage. This is the last resort usually if you have a very chaotic homepage with chaotic styling and you have lost control. This was usually what was done. But here I'd say it's an exception because I don't have any control about how Google styles their search results. And I can just use this important here to tell it basically, no matter what the specificity is here, we're just gonna boost it and make sure that this style will win. If I now refresh, you see all the links are now gray. And if we inspect them, you also see why this works. All those are crossed out basically, because here we have this style, which is marked as important. And this one is now winning against this style, which is actually more specific because it's above it. So if I wouldn't have had this important here, let's just take this out. You see now this style actually loses against this more specific style. But I, I just simplified it because otherwise I would have had to create now quite a lot of specifiers to make sure I override every one of the Google styles. And yeah, this important makes it a bit easier. So that's another trick. So the first thing 
you can use specifiers like I showed for example for the ad box which you can just make more specific and then hide but sometimes if you just want to make it a little quicker not go through all the different specifiers and ensure you're more specific what you can do you can use this important and as I said you can do this for this external library which is pulled in to control the styling of it but you should never do this on your own homepage on your own styles where you have full control where you could rather go in and make a proper structure using SCSS for example. Okay so I think this little excursion I hope this helped uh, I could now go in and change the color of this basically do what I did here on my homepage where I did a lot of changes so I changed all the colors and also when you Go to the images if you select an image how those are displayed i basically did a lot of styling there to customize it and you can do so the core principle is using the developer tools to inspect the different styles you want to target figuring out what the selectors are that google uses to style those overriding them with more specific selectors in your css or as a last resort using important to make sure that your selectors your styling wins over the styling from Google. I hope you find this interesting. If so, please leave a thumbs up and also subscribe for more. I also have some more tutorials on TypeScript coming up. So stay tuned for that. See you.